Uh, so good evening everyone a very warm welcome to you all uh, we have reached to the seventh day of our ambedkar intellectual summit 2024 so it is uh, like a celebrating week for us where we are celebrating dr ambedkar's 133rd birthday this year and we are contributing to his life and mission so I, Suhas Kamlakar, a research scholar from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi, inviting you all for this summit. I, uh, today we are uh, having a, a talk on a very unique topic, which is on Dr. Ambedkar and Prashanity. So uh, I, I invite the guest and my co-moderator, Paul, to go ahead with the discussion. Welcome all. Jai Bhim. Greetings, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful day so far. My name is Paul Vesselotar, and I am a BD student at Bishop's College, Calcutta. Welcome once again to the Ambedkar Intellectual Summit 2024. Before we delay into today's proceedings, allow me to introduce our esteemed guest lecturer. Mr. Shivi Peter, an accomplished independent researcher, based in Nagpur, its expertise lies in the field of Anglican mission history in India and Christian social movements in the country. With over two decades of experience, Mr. Peter has been actively involved in various Christian ecumenical and social movements. Previously, he served as the Executive Secretary of the Political and International Desk at the Student Christian Movement of India. He has also held, held a position as the program executive at the National Council of Churches in India and as the national coordinator of the National Dalit Christian Watch. Currently, Mr. Peter serves as the vice president, president of the Kerala Council of Churches and holds the position of director at the Social Economic Development Service. Thank you, sir, for joining with us in a wonderful session. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Suhas, for your kind words. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Brother Mangesh Raj for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And uh, I'm also thankful to Reverend As Rebenes, uh, the General Secretary of National Council of uh, Churches in India. And I hope you had a wonderful time the, the previous days that we have lots of uh, insightful presentations, people like Gobal Guru and all. I think this is a very unique topic today that we are going to discuss, uh, Ambedkar's view on Christianity or Ambedkar and Christianity. Uh, I think it is necessary to provide a brief historical introduction of the origin of Indian Christianity and the interface between lower caste people and, and Christianity in India. So therefore, uh, there is uh, three parts in my uh, short presentation. The first part, I would like to present the historical formation of Christianity in India. The second part, uh, I would also give one uh, case study from uh, one of the southern uh, uh, places, uh, places called Tirunelveli, and how the lower caste people embraced the Christianity and the problem between the lower caste people and the Christian uh, mission movements. Finally, we will come to the uh, our topic. We will come to the our topic Ambedkar's view on Christianity. The origin, I will read, uh, the origin of Christianity in India. From the very beginning, Christianity had grown up in Indian soil as a naturalized religion and was accepted as one among the Indian religions. The Christians were respected and honored by the rulers, leaders, and the higher caste people of that time. 
the rajas and the emperors conferred upon them royal privileges and grants to be enjoyed forever in martial commercial and cultural achievements the christians also made their contribution there are two views among scholars uh, about the origin of christianity in india according to one it is claimed that saint thomas one of the disciples of jesus christ arrived in india in 52 ad and converted the brahmins of those days and ministered to them later came the syrians in the 3rd and 9th centuries to malabar in kerala under the leadership of thomas of cana and marwan sabriso respectively who too had their missionary activities among the dominant castes the early converts identified themselves as syrian christians or antiochian christians who vested their obedience to the patriarch of antioch in 1542 came francis xavier a portuguese uh, jesuit priest who converted fisher people and a few sugra community people besides drawing the earlier converts into the latin liturgy of roman catholic fold this was opposed by the former syrian or antiochian christians who followed syrian rites however antiochian christians accepted the roman authority in 1753 but maintained their syrian liturgy and called themselves are syro malabar christians in simple terms they did not want to mingle with the newer converts that is the lower caste people and the sudra people but maintained their caste hierarchy the christian mission did not make much inroads into the world of the caste hindus and muslims in the 16th century there was hardly any creative encounter between christianity and indian culture the missionary efforts of the portuguese were mainly confined to small pockets in india where they held political power christianity spread mainly among the employees of portuguese the portuguese uh uh, uh the uh, the the employees and the workers of the portuguese uh, domina- uh, domination and the depressed class both uh, two sections one is for their own people and uh, secondly for the uh, depressed classes consequently caste hindus developed the notion that christianity was the religion of the depressed classes christianity and their mission were interpreted as means for the extension of western political control and aggressive imperialism then after that the protestant mission is coming to india the first protestant mission to india came from denmark a mission was founded in the danish uh, settlement of trankubar in south india protestant missionaries began to work throughout india leading to the growth of different christian communities in 1793 william carey an english baptist minister came to india as a christian missionary he worked in sarampur kolkata and other cities found and founded churches our more today's our moderator paul now i i i am i think that he is from a, a bishop's college kolkata these colleges were built during the protestant missionary time on the uh, uh the main purpose of the missionary uh, missionaries of protestant uh, protestant community were to promote uh, western education in addition to uh, starting the sarampur college and all they also translated uh, bible into bengali and sanskrit it is true that the protestant missions in the 19th century like the roman catholic mission in the 16th century largely followed the colonial flag colonialism and the christian mission went hand in hand since the arrival of the portuguese in india the extent and the nature of the relationship between the mission missions and the colonialism varied from one colonial power to another nevertheless there was an alliance and for many in india during this period 
Christianity was a Western religion and a means used by the Western powers to establish their political control. And the missionary enterprise was interwoven with commerce and cultural imperialism. Within this context, a segment of upper caste intellectuals emerged inspired by Protestant ethics and English education. And they initiated the Hindu social reform movements. You, you, I think you all are aware about the Bengal uh, reformation movement. The, was, the influence of Western culture and Christianity on Hindu reform movements in the 19th century. Hindu reform movements that emerged under the influence of Western culture and Christianity played a pivotal role in shaping the 19th century India, 19th century India's cultural history, Oriental studies, Western thought, and English education all contributed to the formation of a new Hindu intellectualism or Hindu intelligentsia. These developments sparked a cultural and a spiritual awakening within these uh, Hindu communities, which spread across the country and fostered the rise of Indian nationalism. The emergence of Indian nationalism was a complex phenomena, phenomenon shaped by diverse socio-political movements. These movements, influenced by both Western and traditionalist ideologies, reflected, uh, reflected the uh, nature of uh, Indian society and its quest for self-determination. The rise of Indian Christian theology and the national church movement. As a result of Bengal Renaissance, a movement for indigenous theology emerged among Protestant Christians. Figures like Krishna Mohan Banerjee and some other missionaries initiated serious discussions about Indian Christianity. Against the backdrop of uh, Hindu reform movements and, uh, and the national consciousness, a resistance to the institutionalization and the dominance of foreign missions spread among indigenous Christians. The Indian Christian movement envisioned a leadership of indigenous Christians that addressed Indian cultural context and as an alternative missionary institutions based on Western culture, cultural norms and foreign leadership. Consequently, numerous Christian associations emerged across the country and efforts began towards a national church. Examples of this include the National Church of India, Madras, founded in 1886 under the leadership of Palani Andy, and the Christo Samaj, founded in Kolkata in 1887 under the leadership of Kali Charan Banerjee. The idea of, uh, of a national church developed against the historical backdrop of the Indian national uh, uh, or international freedom movements and the beginnings of the Indian political, uh, Indian, uh, Indian political national association. The majority of the leaders of the national church were also the activists of the National Congress and the, and the related movements, they, which all reflected a strong sense of uh, nationalism. Here I would like to uh, introduce a historical uh, figure, Bishop Vedanayagam uh, Assyria, Vedanayagam Samuel Assyria, Bishop V.S. Assyria of uh, Tamil Nadu. Vedanayagam, uh, Bishop Assyria, was the most successful leader of the grassroots movements of conversion to Christianity in South Asia during the early 20th century. He was the first and the only native Indian bishop of an Anglican diocese from 1912 until his death in 1945. As both an effective evangelist to Indian villages, uh, villagers and a respected bishop in the British church hierarchy, Assyria provided a unique bridge between ordinary Indians and the British uh, elites during the late phase of their imperial association. He was equally at home with the untouchables of rural India and the, un and the unreachables of the British Empire. 
Asiri was a popular leader in the rural Andhra and esteemed builder of Protestant unification within India and a pioneer in, in, pioneer in the Indian ecumenical movement. Asiri was born in Tirunelveli, which is a uh, beacon in the landscape of uh, Indian church history, illuminating the path of early missionary endeavors. The Church Mission Society, uh, Church Mission Society is known as CMS. Uh, the Church Mission Society began its work in Tirunelveli in the early decades of the 19th century, and it became a mass movement in the 19 in the 1830s. The crack created in the Hindu social order and the emerging movements for social equality among lower caste made the mission work complicated. In the 1940s, there was a mass conversion from the Shainar community, they are also known as Nadar community, which led to the formation of a unique identity for Trinalveri Christians. It is in this context, uh, uh, in Indian national Indian. Uh, missionary Society was formed, IMS, Indian Mission Society was formed. The concept of a national Indian church paralleled the rise of Indian nationalism. In the Indian Political Association and the Indian National Congress had already sown the seeds of a national identity. This led to the formation of several indigenous Christian associations such as uh, National Christian uh, National Church of Madras, and the Madhira Home uh, Missionary Society. It was within this context of national consciousness that the National Missionary Society, IMS, was formed on 25th December in 1905. The book authored by, co authored by Bishop Assyria and Bishop Henry mm -hmm. Whitehead. Henry Whitehead uh, was an uh, Anglican bishop of uh, Madras Diocese. They have called a book titled Christ in the Indian Villages, which gives us a very clear picture of the Indian villages and the conversion movement happened among the lower caste people. The indigenous missionary movement was influenced by growing nationalism and the Christian missionary enterprise itself helped fuel growing self-awareness of caste, ethnic, regional and uh, even national identities among Indian converts. Christian teaching contributed to the development of ethnic self-assertion among Tamil Christians, and this in turn contributed indirectly to the rise of other forms of regional and national consciousness in the rural South. The stated objective of most foreign mission missionaries from at least the mid 19th century had been to establish self governing, self supporting, and self propagating churches in mission fields. However, in practice, many Western missionary societies had been reluctant to hand responsibility over to the native Indian uh, Christians, that is, the lower caste people. Most missions were slow to execute the devolutionary ideal of establishing independent national churches in the field, in the mission field. The missionaries' unwillingness to share duties with the capable Indian Christians was at least uh, partially, uh, uh, it created a lot of tensions between the foreign mission movement and the indigenous uh, missionary uh, movements. Some Indian Christians, particularly the poor and the less educated ones, also desired to be independent on foreign uh, societies, that is foreign uh, mission societies. The success of the missionary enterprise among untouchables and the lower caste group created a massive demographic shift in the Indian churches uh, churches membership during the 19th century. Indian Christian congregations had always vastly outnumbered European and Eurasian congregations. This trend accelerated by the country's end. Anglican bishops could not uh, plausibly deny episcopal rank or uh, supervision to Indian converts. 
and the generally and the generally accepted divisions between an ecclesiastical establishment for Europeans and Eurasians on one hand and missionary societies for native converts on the other was no longer even theoretically tenable. The formation of Dornacle uh, Diocese, Dornacle Diocese, are, uh, at present it is in Andhra Pradesh. The, the, the Dornacle Diocese was formed exclusively for the lower caste people. So the formation of Dornacle Diocese under the leadership of Bishop Assyria bridged this gap between the missionary movements and the lower caste people, even if it did not end all the controversy. controversy. The Dornacle Diocese was established to provide Episcopal oversight for some Telugu-speaking regions of the Northern Madras Presidency and the southeast corner of the Nizam's dominations. Uh, conversion movements among untouchable groups in these areas had brought over a million people into Christian churches of various denominations during the last three decades of the 19th century. This rapid growth of uh, continued, rapid growth continued in the 20th century, increasing the total Indo-Anglican Anglican population in Telugu country uh, tenfold from 22,356 in 1894 to 2.5 lakhs in 1940s. So this is the uh, background, the historical background of the origin of uh, uh, Christianity in India and the foreign missionary uh, movements and their work in India. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, the law, there was a, uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, 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 mass movements uh, from the lower caste section. Uh, and their uh, their engagement with uh, Christianity is a very uh, it, in now, nowadays it's a, it's a very uh, important academic uh, research area, uh, particularly in the uh, southern uh, states of India. So, without knowing uh, the context, the historical context of Christianity and the mission movement, we cannot understand Ambedkar's view on Christianity. We do know that Ambedkar's uh, Ambedkar considered Christianity for his people, uh, for the, the social uh, mobilization of his people, but later he denied that proposal. So I'm coming to that point. Why Ambedkar? Uh, and wh wh what was Ambedkar's view on Christianity and why Ambedkar hesitated to uh, embrace Christianity? While fighting the caste system and untouchability, Ambedkar initially considered encouraging their conversion to Christianity. He believed external support could uh, bolster their struggle, achieved through merging with some other religious community by converting, uh, converting to its religion. However, Ambedkar ultimately rejected this idea. He recognized that Christianity in India also harbored caste divisions. Conversion, he likely uh, realized, wouldn't alter Dell's social standing. They might still be considered as untouchables, not only by Hindus, but also by the higher caste people within Christianity. Ambedkar's personal uh, experiences, because Ambedkar had a lot of uh, uh, bitter experience from the caste Christians, uh, he dis uh, they discriminated him. They didn't allow him to stay with him. They didn't offer them uh, uh, in some context to stay with uh, him. Uh, they uh, rejected uh, the uh, some invitations to dining uh, to di uh, to have food with uh, Ambedkar and his people. But having lot of bitter experience and discrimination from the Christian upper caste people, and uh, this is also uh, made him. Uh, that uh, the, uh, the Dalits, the un untouchables, will also face the same kind of uh, discrimination if they are converting to Christianity. Ambedkar also criticized the missionaries for believing their work ends with the conversion only. He argued that they neglected to advocate for the political rights of Dalit converts. Christian missionaries, according to Ambedkar, 
failed to grasp their responsibility beyond conversion. He believed they, uh, they should advocate for the removal of injustice faced by Dalits even after they converted. This missionary inaction is unfortunate, unfortunate but even more concerning is the silence of Dalit converts who continue to endure the same social discrimination they faced before conversion. Ambedkar believed the separation of religion and politics within Indian Christianity discouraged Christians from fully participating in Indian democracy. He urged, urged them to embrace their civic duty and actively engage in political process, including serving the nation. Ambedkar uh, highlighted Ambedkar highlighted the historical absence of Christians in Indian politics and emphasized the vital role of political support for the church's institutional survival. Uh, noting that despite being labeled as ignorant, many untouchables had actively engaged in politics, holding 15 seats in the legis uh, legislative assembly at the time of Ambedkar writing his speech and benefiting from affirmative action, uh, scholarships and government hostels, which housed the students for uh, 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 hostel for uh, Dalits, poor and the students from tribal background. However, Ambedkar lamented the lack of political organization among Christians, even as Dalits were gaining political representation and asserting their rights. This lack of political clout, he argued, uh, left uh, Christian Dalits vulnerable to injustices uh, with uh, uh, virtually no resources. That the people who are the Dalit uh, people, the untouchables who are converted to Christianity, they are facing the same uh, discrimination before they converting to Christianity, and they are having no resources. Ambedkar also placed the significant blame on educated uh, higher caste Christians, which I already mentioned. The, 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 there are separate churches for uh, uh, Dalit uh, Christians and uh, sub, uh, separate cemeteries for Dalit Christians and uh, upper caste Christians. He believed that, Ambedkar believed that they had a responsibility to build solidarity and lead a political movement for Dalit Christians. Their inaction, he argued, contributed to the uh, uh, contributed to the uh, uh, the vulnerability of Indian Christians, uh, despite their educational prominence. One theory, one theory Ambedkar offered for this paradox was the dependence of uh, Dalit Christians and tribals on foreign missionaries for economic support. Reliance on external aid, he argued, discouraged them from mobilizing politically. Effective political action, he believed, required self-reliance, the ability to agitate, educate, and organize. Without this, Ambedkar says, Dalits and tribals would remain marginalized in public life due to their lack of political engagement and dependence on external actors. Conversion to Islam or Christianity would uh, denationalize the depressed classes. If they go to Islam, the number of Muslims will be doubled and the danger of Muslim domination also become a, a real. If they go to Christianity, the numerical strength of Christians would increase considerably. It will also help to strengthen the hold of British on this country. While Christianity can indeed oft offer, there is the answer to their deepest questions about who they are, the church would do well to reflect on Ambedkar's words. Even after all these decades, his prophetic voice continues to echo, urging, urging the Indian uh, Christian community to address broader issues and the systematic problems. To this day, the Christians have still not been able to secure their constitutional rights. To uh, uh, and the, the they are not 
coming to the affirmative, the rights of affirmative actions. And the caste system is unfortunately uh, uh, remaining in the Indian Christian community. In the light of uh, this reality, the call for justice and the, and the pursuit of, uh, of the values of the kingdom of God become a paramount. The Church of Christ in India must continue to pursue the values of the kingdom of uh, God as well as in the uh, the, uh, the insights uh, given by Ambedkar. So therefore, uh, uh, the, uh, it, it is in this context and based on the values of Bible or the Protestant ethics or the new theological understanding and the rereading uh, Bible and uh, taking Ambedkar re, uh, uh, seriously, then only the Indian Christians, the, uh, the people who converted from untouchable caste to Christianity could uh, fulfill their dream through this conversion. So here ends my paper. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it, it was a very, I got only very a short time to prepare this uh, uh, paper, but I hope that uh, 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 we can initiate uh, some discussion from this paper. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for uh, this talk, for this online uh, meeting for us. And this was really insightful to know about uh, various aspects which you have told uh, told about Amitkar and Christianity. Uh, so I'll just give a brief, uh, sum I'll just summarize briefly what uh, sir has uh, been quoting us. So the first point which he has said that Ambedkar, uh, uh, Ambedkar and Krishna, the main crux of the talk, uh, which I find interesting and which is useful for us, uh, for, for us is that uh, how Ambedkar was trying to uh, abstract the religion which he has to adopt. First, he uh, has... Uh, thought about, we have heard that he has thought about Christianity, Islam, and uh, Islam as well as Sikhism was the most prominent uh, prominent religion which he was going to along, but um, but uh, finally he had taken Buddhism into account. So about the about Peter's talk, in Peter's talk, sir, he has also told us, uh, told us about this study, the case study about the historical or origin about Christianity, he has told, up, uh, told us about the series of various social uh, movements uh, in the, in Christianity, uh, how the social movement, the mass movement, especially the mass movements, which were being carried out since uh, since uh, the historical, all the historical events he has uh, uh, mentioned. And uh, lastly, Ambedkar's views on Christianity which he has focused that uh, if uh, uh, if the people convert into Christian Christianity, then uh, the, the democratic values will be hazard. Um, there, then there will be no democratic value. This uh, this will this is uh, what uh, is being told by Peter sir. So uh, this was really an enriching talk sir. Uh, we uh, it was really. Uh, a new topic for all of us and uh, a new uh, new thought provoking for uh, and uh, it will be helpful for academia as well so thank you so much sir so now now present now in our meeting the next session will be q and a which will be taken by paul so paul over to you uh, now the floor is open you can ask a question by unmuting your mic. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. I have two questions. Like, uh, how do you see the future of Christianity amongst the lower caste people in India? And the second is, uh, like, what did Baba Sahib Ambedkar think about when he studied about Jesus Christ? Uh, thank you. Yeah. 
shall i respond now or uh, after uh, listening others so... no sir you can respond yeah. the second question is quite uh, theological as well as philosophical so uh, i think paul is a the uh, student of theology right if uh, they can only give the respond to the second question i will try but the first question the future of uh, dalit christians uh, in india uh, you know according to the there are uh, two uh, ecumenical or church platforms in india one is the cbci catholic bishops conference of india cbci and uh, the other one is uh, national council of churches ncci for for uh, protestant christians they have uh, uh, you know that in 20 uh, two, uh, 20 uh, 2004 a case has been filed uh, in the supreme court regarding the scheduled caste uh, 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 rights to the uh, dalit christians uh, still the case is uh, going on the case is pending in the supreme court in that uh, in 2013 uh, the catholic church as well as the uh, platform of the constituent body of Protestant Church, that is NCCI, they intervened in this case and they filed an affidavit. In that affidavit, they say that in India, uh, the 70 in the, uh, the, uh, the population, the total population of Delhi Christians within the Christian community is 70 percentage. The 70 percentage of the Christian population uh, within the uh, Christian community belongs to uh, Dalit Christians and uh, uh, tribal Christians. Therefore, we can say a large number of people are there in the Christian community. But the contradiction is, but you know, they, uh, if if I am right, maybe the figures are a little different. I think there are 182 bishops, Catholic bishops in India. Among these 180 or 82 bishops, only four bishops are from uh, Dalit community. You see, the 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 majority of the people belongs to the Dalit community, but all the infrastructure, the bishops, the nuns, the priests, and the uh, seminaries, the uh, the uh, other ecumenical institutions, colleges, schools, thousands of institutions, all are uh, headed by or dominated by the minority upper caste people. So this is the, the one side, the Dalit Christians are facing, uh, still facing the discrimination. The other side, they are also uh, fighting for their constitutional rights. That is the, uh, 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 the, the case, the Supreme Court case still is pending, which is the clear example for that. They are still, last 72 years, they are uh, in search of, they are uh, protesting for their uh, uh, constitutional rights. The other side, within the church, they are also being discriminated by the uh, upper caste people. So this is the situation where the Dalit Christians are uh, living. So you know that Ambedkar movements and uh, you know that Dalit, uh, the, uh, the Dalit movements across the country, uh, particularly in the 70s, it also influenced uh, the Dalit Christian movements within the church. Therefore, the Dalit consciousness the Dalit awareness, uh, uh, which created, the, which uh, uh, initiated lots of uh, Dalit Christian movements within the church. So I think uh, uh, the Dalit movements in the public sphere or the secular, uh, secular sphere should uh, take to address this question seriously. We know that there is a division within the Dalit community in the name of religion. Some people are in uh, Buddhist, Buddhist uh, religion, some are in Hindu and um, Islam and all. But beyond all these religious divisions, and uh, we need to address the issues of the Dalits who belongs to different, who deployed different uh, religions. Uh, therefore, uh, I think the future of Dalit Christians lies there. Why? Because if the secular public if the uh, their brothers and uh, brothers and sisters in the other religions, uh, if they are not taking the question, the issues of the Christians, definitely there is no future for the people. There is no future. Otherwise, they will remain as untouchable. You know that uh, since, uh, since they are uh, they are not coming under the 
prevention of uh, uh, SCST, uh, you know, uh, atrocity act. Uh, if someone is killing them, they won't get any, uh, you know, uh, legal uh, assistance. They are not. They are not having any kind of constitutional or legal support. Therefore, they. But they are. They embrace the Christianity. You know, but uh, that's what I tried to explain in my paper. In South, particularly, they embrace the Christianity to escape from the uh, Hindu social order. But where they reached, the upper caste Christians were wel welcomed them. Again, the uh, discrimination continues. So again, I am saying that still the condition of the Christians remains the same, but the secular public, the Dalit uh, intelligentsia or the larger Dalit uh, movement should address these questions and it will only give uh, life to the people who converted to Christianity. Second thing, as I mentioned earlier, it is a very uh, serious question. What was Ambedkar? I didn't touch that part in my paper because uh, it, it, it will take, uh, it, it needs a special attention. What is Ambedkar's theological as well as philosophical uh, approach towards Christianity? That debate was also there uh, in 1930s. Uh, you know that uh, why Amb Ambedkarism, uh, Buddhism, what is the essence of uh, Buddhism, what is the essence of Christian understanding was also there. Ambedkar quoted many Christian verses to challenge the missionary movements. Uh, so I am sorry that uh, it's a highly theological as well as philosophical question, uh, but it's very important. And uh, uh, then only we will get a, a larger picture why Ambedkar uh, rejected Christianity uh, uh, or why uh, Ambedkar hesitated to embrace uh, Christianity. Because it is not only the political reason or the social reason, but also there is a reason of philosophy and theology. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, next question, Mr. Rajinder. You were raising your hand. Yeah, I raised my hand to ask a question from uh, Mr. Shibi Peter. The question is that Christianity gives an assurance, sort of assurance, I will say, that uh, it will, if you become a Christian, Egalitarianism will follow because the gospel says that the Lord has created all men equal. Now, when the spiritual and social principle is this, and once you become Christian, then uh, you set up church for Dalit Christians separately and for upper caste Christians separately, and both are co-located opposite each other, then the sheen, the beauty of the spiritual principle as well as social principle is altogether eroded for erosion in Indian context solely and solely Christians are responsible who have managed the church correctly actually pointed out by you that they are solely responsible. Now when I suppose get converted to a Christian and I aspire to become a part of that egalitarian society and I aspire to shun my earlier identity as an untouchable or a Dalit. But uh, after becoming Christian, that is imposed upon me. And being Christian also, I aspire to claim all those benefits which actually egalitarian system, uh, if I remain there, will not be, I will not be entitled to. So this contradiction, I am eroding and I am corrupting the spiritual as well as social high principle of egalitarianism and the principle that God has created all men equal. So therefore, if being a Christian, I seek all those, say, uh, special privileges, which uh, uh, my, my other brethren who were untouchable may be availing, so I am bringing down the uh, social and spiritual spirit of high uh, placement in Christianity itself. So therefore, uh, converted Christians, if they aspire to avail those uh, special privileges which are entitled to other group of untouchables, as to untouchables, and they still remain themselves as Christian, how the upper caste dominated diocese of church 
विल रिस्पॉन्ड टू दैट काइंड ऑफ ग्रुप विद इन द क्रिस्टनिटी तो अल्टीमेटली वट बाबा साहेब अंबेडकर एक्चुअली इनिशियली एनालाइज इन नाइनटीन थर्टी दैट प्रीस्ट एंड नन्स आर ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इन कन्वर्जन दे आर एक्चुअली नॉट कंसर्न विद विद रेजिंग द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लाइफ ऑफ दो आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ क्रिस्टन क्रिस्टनिटी एंड आई थिंक यू टॉक अबाउट दैट मैटर विच इज पेंडिंग इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इट वुड बी वेरी वेरी टफ टास्क फॉर द क्रिस्टन अनटचेबल क्रिस्टन to contest that particular matter because you yourself mr dr peter would be aware that government of india has already appointed one commission i think under ministry of social justice to look into this particular aspect and there are diverse and a very strong oppositions uh, which have actually uh, 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 are there and they have raised this questions uh, before them so how do you respond to this question that remaining a christian and accepting lower social uh, hierarchy in the christianity bringing down the gospel of lord that god has created all men equal and uh, also uh, creating a church where all men are not uh, uh, say able to sit and pray to that lord who has created all men equal so this is uh, i think utter and utter failure of the church as well as uh, the missionaries who have worked in india for last 200 years even access to education is a basic principle and catholic uh, say schools are spread across the country a dalit man is it is very very difficult for him to seek admission in those schools it may be from kashmir to tamil nadu and from uh, north to west east to east to south so all these are the problems which i think uh, church should address if they want to create a vibrant christian community in indian context thank you i think it's uh, it was not a question but a very good uh, addition to my paper and i think it's made a sir's response made my uh, paper more clear uh, i'm completely agreeing with you and of course uh, you rightly uh, mentioned about the justice balakrishnan commission uh, but the i think the time is already over and again that case is uh, coming to the uh, uh, supreme court uh, uh, i think that is the latest report which I, um, if i'm right that is the latest update regarding the case the uh, the first part what you are trying to say is that all the islam christianity and all the churches are egalitarian we all are praying and working for the kingdom of god we all are waiting for it but in practice that's the question what ambedkar rejected christianity sir also mentioned that in 1930s debate uh, because one side we are propagating a egalitarian church a, a, a church where all are coming together and worshiping god but in practice in our social life uh, we are discriminated by the upper caste people but uh, but there is a hope there is historically if you are analyzing we have several hopes how the christian survived how they uh, addressed this kind of uh, discriminations there are several uh, experience i would like to we, we have to understand that's what i gave a, a, a historical explanation before coming to ambedkar's view on uh, christianity see there are because i think most of the participants are here uh, students they also must understand the uh, christianity the, Uh, because ambedkar ambedkar view on christianity then that is ambedkar view but we should also know in which context ambedkar uh, come to this conclusion so therefore in uh, there are two important uh, churches two categories one is the catholic the other one is protestant within the protestant there are many there are eastern churches as well but within the protestant churches protestant missionaries are mainly worked among the uh, untouchables particularly the southern uh, church as a result of that work there are many churches uh, exclusively for dalit christians exclusively for uh, dalit christians uh, for example the church of south india which is a uh, 45 million people are there uh, 4.5 million people are there 45 lakh uh, people are there uh, as the believers uh, of uh, church of south india church of south india is having 24 dioceses in the uh, southern states andhra tamil nadu kerala karnataka telugana as well so most of the dioceses 
uh, are uh, you know controlled by dalit christians only in the protestant church that is also within uh, in the church of south india as i i told about the uh, uh, catholic side the total 180 bishops like in uh, uh, when it's come to church of south india among 24 bishops some are in jail <laughs> we'll be glad with some cases but when we consider the total number of bishops uh, according to the number of the diocese uh, 15 to 17 people are from Dalit background. And uh, many important uh, many uh, schools and institutions are run by Dalit Christians. So when we analyze the uh, total picture of the uh, Dalit Christians, the situation of Dalit Christians in India, there are some churches where Dalit Christians are having a good, uh, you know, good living condition. The another one is that the separate churches and separate cemeteries that is also there in South, particularly in Tamil Nadu and all. In Kerala, we have separate churches for upper caste people and Dalit Christians. But that also a good opportunity to uh, use for our social mobilization. Why? Because uh, the separate churches coming together, that also will uh, bring us a togetherness, unity within uh, within the Dalit Christians. By using this opportunity, also Dalit Christians are engaging the power uh, equation. They are interacting with the church, power, uh, politics, and all. That also brought a lot of result uh, uh, to the Dalit Christian community. There are several stories. I don't want to uh, mention about all these things, but there are. Uh, several um, examples or experiences or uh, good uh, stories that uh, encouraging us. Uh, but I am, um, but uh, you know, in uh, most of the northern states where the uh, people they don't have such kind of uh, missionary historical background, where the discrimination and the challenges are still remaining. I was not responding to such uh, because it, uh, his uh, response was uh, quite encouraging. I was just uh, uh, sharing my thoughts as a response to uh, such, uh, you know, uh, uh, his uh, well narrated, uh, uh, you know, talk. Thank you, sir. We have one more uh, question in the uh, message meeting chat by Vir. I will read it out. What is the relevance of Christianity as a religion for the scheduled caste in the contemporary times? More so when the path for emancipation was laid down by Dr. Ambedkar himself, when the discriminatory practices within the institution of Christ Christianity. I acknowledge the role of Christianity that played in the history of SE. And again, he's messaging. What is the vision to struggle within the folds of Christianity when there could be an alternative way bypassing the entire struggle? Okay. The uh, first question, the answer is there in the last line. <laughs> okay. The role of Christianity, you know, how why it's also already played a very important, significant role. That's what I uh, brought the example of Bishop uh, B.S. Assyria. Uh, you have to, in your further, uh, you know, reference, you have to uh, read more about the, uh, more about uh, Bishop Assyria. There is a well-known book uh, titled uh, In the Shadow of Mahatma. Uh, Bishop Assyria, uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi called Assyria as, uh, as his number one enemy. Why? Because uh, Assyria born and brought up in Tinalveli and he uh, went to uh, Andhra. Uh, uh, Andhra and the where he converted lakhs of people. It says that 2.5 people have been converted by Bishop Assyria. You know now it is a very uh, well. It's a very big city. This Karimnagar uh, uh, diocese, which is now known as Karimnagar, it's a very big city, and the people they are now uh, you know they uh, now they are leading a very living a very good uh, condition. So the conversion also changed the uh, lives of the people across the country. So that's what I'm saying that we have to analyze all these successful stories. 
the other thing is that as uh, rajendra sir if i'm right uh, uh, rajendra kashyap sir already mentioned uh, you know the christianity is an egalitarian but theologically it's uh, envisioned uh, people who are living together fraternity and the fellowship and everything so it is not the problem of the uh, the, the the theology of christianity the the, the theology of Christianity or the value of Christianity is highly egalitarian. But when it's come to the practice that we are having a lot of challenges. It is the same for all the religions. Even if it's applicable for Buddhism, it's applicable for Islam and any other religions. Because all the religions are envisioning a very egalitarian society and they are envisioning a very good uh, world. But in practice, the contextual challenges where we are leaving uh, is bringing uh, struggles and the conflicts to the community. This is the issue. So uh, it is not the problem of the value or the theological understanding or the faith understanding of the Christianity, but how people are engaging with it. That is the, uh, there, there comes the real challenge. Therefore, there, there is the kind of the there is Christians no need to leave their religion, no need to leave the religion. But one more thing I want to add because those who are uh, very uh, who are scholars in Ambedkarism and all, they should also uh, critically and read Ambedkar because when the conversion movements were happening in South India. That has been not seriously taken by Ambedkar. Just my maybe my reading is very uh, because of my limited knowledge or reading. But according to my understanding, the mass conversion movement have been not, uh, not seriously uh, addressed by Ambedkar uh, in 1930s when he is making this kind. Because a group of uh, Dalit Christian uh, leaders uh, met Ambedkar uh, two times. And, uh, and Ambedkar's, uh, and, uh, Ambedkar's books, uh, Ambedkar has written about that kind of conversation. I think it's volume 10. So uh, the, uh, before the Ambedkar movement was initiating in 1930s, Dalit converted to Christianity centuries back, century in the sense, uh, 150 years back. So we have to consider this larger uh, social history of Dalit Christians and their conversion movement, then only we can uh, come to a conclusion and we can engage with this uh, historical process. This is what, what my position on this. The la last question I didn't get, uh, but I will read it once again. What is the vision to struggle within the folds of Christianity when there could be an uh, alternative way bypassing the entire struggle? the future of it. <laughs> uh, here I can say only one word. We can only pray. <laughs> because uh, the uh, there are, as I mentioned there, there, there are lots of uh, initiatives happening, going on within the Christian community. There are many people. Now, uh, you know, since uh, 1970s, the Christian theologists are there uh, taking Ambekar seriously. There are many scholars uh, uh, are there who are taking Ambedkarism seriously and based on such kind of ideological positions there are many they have initiated many uh, Dalit Christian movements within the church and outside the church. I would like to mention one organization here National Council of Dalit Christian NCDC. It's a very national platform of uh, Dalit Christians uh, uh, particularly the lay, uh, lay people. So there are national level as well as the local uh, bodies uh, who are working tirelessly for the cause of the people. Uh, but I would like to add, uh, uh, beyond the religious uh, uh, you know, barriers, uh, we all should understand these people. What is going on our uh, people in other religions is very important. And uh, we, we can uh, criticize the uh, you know philosophically politically from the point of view of Ambedkar and all but uh, by understanding the social history and all uh, we have to engage we have to uh, shoulder with the people who are in the Christian community that also will help the people to uh, set their future goals 
Yeah, so I have a very small and last question. Can I go ahead? Yes, Robert. yes, please. Uh, okay. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, very much. Yes, yeah. 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 So thank you. Uh, so sir, I have very basic small question. When Ambedkar went to Colombia or uh, overseas, so they, uh, did he face any caste discrimination over there? And the second is, uh, sir, if you are taking, uh, telling about the, there is hierarchy and caste discrimination amongst Christians also. So uh, uh, so in Buddhism also, there is a similar kind of uh, hierarchy. So what will you say? Why did Ambedkar choose Buddhism only then? <laughs> this uh, two questions are not coming to my thing. Why? Because I don't know exactly because some others could know that the Colombian University and all. Uh, but Ambedkar's writings and speeches says that he has been uh, faced a lot of discrimination from the uh, upper caste Christians that I already mentioned. Uh, that's a, his personal experience because he was experienced the discrimination. Then if Ambedkar is facing such kind of discrimination, just think about his own people who are in a very, uh, you know, vulnerable situation. That is, uh, that, but, but that was not the primary concern of Ambedkar. He was just substantiating his main points. Ambedkar's uh, critique on uh, Christianity was highly philosophical as well as political. The main thing, political, because... Ambekar accept that Christianity is egalitarian, but you are not. One thing is that the Western missionaries, they are only concerned about the conversion. They are not concerned about the political rights of the people. That is the one thing. The second thing is that you are saying that all are one, but the upper caste people, they are discriminating our people. So it's a danger to go to uh, convert to Christian. That was Ambedkar's position. That needs to be critically, uh, you know, uh, analyzed. But that was Ambedkar's position. You know, he, otherwise we are uh, converting the people, the mass uh, is converting to Christianity. It will only help the upper caste people to increase their number as Christians. Now it's the, today, you know, nowadays also it's the same happening, you know. The Christians are having the minority status in India, Christian minority, right? You know, within the who are enjoying this minority privilege, the upper caste people only enjoying the minority uh, privileges. You know, some of our, I think, uh, people are from some people are from Delhi, it seems. Uh, St. Stephen Scholars, it's a minority institution. Who runs it? Who owns it? How many Dalit Christians are getting opportunity to study there? Who, how many people are getting? And a job there. There are hundreds in Kerala itself. There are two hundred and forty-seven arts and science colleges. If you are taking less than a uh, hundred people are teaching from the Dalit Christian community. So that uh, there are a lot of discrimination. This is actually Ambedkar foreseen it. This is the discrimination. So that is the reason he rejected uh, uh, Christianity. But after that. The Dalit movements and the Ambedkar's own vision, uh, you know, strengthened the people, the Dalit Christian people. And now they are uh, having a lot of democratic engagements and initiatives within the church. That has uh, brought a lot of changes. That's what I told you know, the many Protestant churches are uh, having a good, they are giving good opportunity for Dalit Christian. But we cannot take it as, uh, we cannot. Uh, consider this as the same thing is happening in the national level. The second thing, uh, why Ambedkar, uh, you know, again, the uh, Buddhism, embraced the Buddhism, it's a very philosophical question, and I am not able to answer to that question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is there any other questions from the audience? Uh, Uh, Dr. Peter, I have one small question, not not a question really. Yes, why yes. one converts in in what? living? Why one converts? Yeah, living as a human being in society, following one belief system or other belief system, from one belief system to another belief system. Why one converts? Uh, to my understanding, 
the one who converts there are two type of people who convert to another belief system one is the one set of people who have everything and they want they are anticipating the fear of change so therefore to save everything which they had or which they have to protect them they convert or second set of people like dalits and untouchable who were falling who were who were at the lowest ebb of living in society they have better aspiration after getting conver converted to a, a belief system so therefore the reason for conversion of both set of people are different once the the tall missionaries who come and set up a belief system in a particular land and those who propagate the real gospel the gospel means it is not a christian gospel but it is a gospel means in a, a religious sense that a god has created suppose all men equal now that belief system when one is propagating he is a he is a missionary person and his uh, stature is tall his lookout is very tall the moment he is no more there to spearhead that particular moment and shallow people take over the charge so therefore all high principles all high moral grounds which he has created erode and this kind of uh, say uh, cracks come into that belief system so therefore uh, people who are not that enlightened that not are not that foresighted when the command comes into their hand to so they create church for dalit christian separately and for upper caste christian separately so it is a i think a, 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 a competing interest of communities even those who convert what do you say on this particular point see uh, historically saying all the people are converts even brahmins they are converted Uh, but uh, sir i am completely agreeing with your position but uh, the thing is that the main question see church is a faith religious entity of course the other one is that it's a social it's a social institution as well so the main problem is that how we are strategizing to uh, define the the social institution that is the main question uh the same thing is happening all other uh, secular as well as religious uh, entities the uh, because the caste is still practicing or caste is still prevailing in the christian churches but there are lot of changes because, uh, because of the struggle protests and all we, we have a uh, lots of um, legal uh, you know uh, our all law support but the main question now what the uh, christians are facing is how we are strategizing to define the church i think the dalit community the dalit christian intelligentsia has gone uh, 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 ahead to uh, to uh, to uh, with regard to this this question so i think uh, within the christianity that's what the dalits are not leaving the church is increasing day by day if you are taking the data because why because as a social institution and uh, still you know for one uh, i know that the time is very less police give it some <laughs> you know signs but uh, one example i will uh, uh, make it clear for example dalit christians are not having any constitutional privileges i will take an example from kerala we are not having any uh, no, state privileges but how the, these people are still uh, existing in kerala uh, society having uh, having uh, you know in a dignified man why because they used the possibilities of the church itself church itself if there was christian missionaries we did, we won't get uh, education only because of the christian uh, mission movements you know kerala model development is very well what is this kerala model development education system who started christian missionaries so therefore through the education the dalit christians could come to at least this level of their living condition it is not the state so there therefore i am saying that there uh, one side we are though we are facing discrimination at the same time the missionary uh, institutions also gave opportunities to come to at least this level particularly through education
So we have to see that side also. I don't know if this is what exactly your question, but uh, this is the uh, one example I can give. Thank you very much, Dr. Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, let's move on to the next question. Uh, sir, your final comments for this session, please. You are asking me? Yes, sir. Your final session, your final comment. I, I think you have a format for this webinar, no? The moderators to ask the press. Oh, for me, it's a learning process, no? See, I, I told you I'm an independent researcher. For me, it's a learning process. Uh, because to prepare this paper, I got a hard leaf, uh, you know, four days. Because I have my previous, uh, you know, kind of preparations and all. But because of my uh, continuous travel and other meetings, I couldn't pro prepare it uh, well. Uh, but this meeting webinar, I was telling Mangesh uh, brother this uh, evening that uh, it gave me a good opportunity to work again on this paper because uh, your, your questions are encouraging me because some areas are uh, we need to give a more clari clarity, particularly the philosophical as well as the theological part of Ambedkar, uh, you know, engagement with the Christianity. I think, uh, you know, this. Uh, I, I feel that this webinar gives me a very good uh, learning. And of course, I'm thankful to Rajendra Sar. His response was quite encouraging. And uh, thank you for all the youngsters, because still, you know, people are uh, very much uh, interested to understand other religions and what is going on, the other people who converted to Christianity. And I think the academia should take up this question forward. And I think that will be benefited to the people of, uh, you know, the Christians and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So as we have come to the end of this session, I would like to thank my dear organizers, guest lecturer, participants, co-moderators, and uh, esteemed guests. On behalf of the organizing committee of the Ambedkar Intel Lecture Summit 2024. Hello. I would like to express our sincere appreciation to our uh, distinguished guests and expertise with us. Your profound knowledge and thought-provoking ideas have truly enriched our understanding on this topic discussed. To the organizers, thank you for your tireless efforts in planning and executing this summit flawlessly. Your dedication and hard work have made this event possible. And we are grateful for your commitment to promoting intellectual discourse and exchange. To my co-moderator, Mr. Ms. Suhas, thank you for your collaboration and support throughout the session. Your professionalism and enthusiasm have been instrumental in facilitating engaging discussion and ensuring the smooth flow of the program. Last but not, but not least, to all the participants, thank you for your active engagement and insightful contributions. Your enthusiasm and passion for learning have made this summit a truly enriching experience for everyone involved. As we conclude this session, I am pleased to announce that our next session will be held at 7 p.m. on the topic, Dr. Baba Shaib Ambedkar and Pasmanda Muslim. I invite you all to join once again for what promises to be another enlightening and thought-provoking discussion. Once again, thank you all for your unwavering support and enthusiasm. We look forward to welcome you to our next section. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.